Now, the clear-up has been continuing after strong winds and mm. rain battered the coast over the weekend. But it wasn't just homes and businesses that suffered. It was wild out there. Lifeboat crews were called to an alarming number of incidents connected with the growing sport of kite surfing. Well, today they're warning about the dangers the weather can pose, as Martin Stew now reports. The calm after the storm in Harwich today after a manic weekend for the lifeboat crew. Paul Smith and his men were called out five times. Some of the action he captured on a special helmet camera. One hour in the water, his temperature's dropped, he's cold, slightly confused. This is seconds after a kite surfer from Cambridge was pulled from the sea a mile off the coast. After an hour in the water and separated from his kite without the intervention of a lifeboat and a medic lowered from the Coast Guard helicopter, he could easily have died. This bit here is, is the end result for us, seeing the man actually safe and well. It's, it's, it's a relief for us, but I'm sure it's, a, it's far more for the family or whoever's standing ashore and, and reported him missing in the first place. The man is said to be recovering well. The day before, the same crew braved treacherous seas after another call about a missing kite surfer. It's becoming a growing sport and, and we're seeing more and more of these incidents. And, and the units involved here, obviously, it's, it's two lifeboats, a rescue helicopter and various Coast Guard units. So the, the, this sport is, is, is actually taking up and using a lot of our time and resources. The Coast Guard weren't the only ones with their work cut out. Essex Police received more than 800 emergency calls as houses, cars and trees were all the victim of stormy weather. This is the aftermath of what locals in Benfleet in Essex described as a mini tornado which damaged 60 homes. Oh, it was terrible, it was really, really bad. I was stood in the bus shelter and I thought the bus shelter was going to crash in and uh, it was pretty scary, but it only lasted a couple of minutes, so it wasn't too bad. Lowestoft was also hit. The owners of this caravan, flattened by wind, were forced to find temporary accommodation. Meanwhile, three oil rig workers had to be rescued off the coast. None of the men were hurt. All in all, a busy weekend. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Harwich. A man will be along with the weather as well just before half past six. Now, in other news, a man has pleaded guilty to a knife attack on the Premier League footballer Callum Davenport in Bedford. Worrell Whitehurst, who's the boyfriend of Davenport's sister, admitted causing grievous bodily harm with intent to the West Ham United player. He also pleaded guilty to unlawfully wounding Davenport's mother in the same incident in August. He'll be sentenced at a later date. The future of two of the region's biggest air bases could be under threat, according to national newspaper reports. The Sunday Times claims the future of RAF Marham in Norfolk could be at risk, with the RAF reported to be considering huge budget cuts. The paper claims RAF Wittering would be under threat of closure when the Harrier jump jet is retired. The Ministry of Defence says it routinely reviews spending, but would not make any decision until the new year. Now then, it's one of the most notorious speed cameras in the country, earning half a million pounds in speeding fines every single year. But now figures released by the police show that the number of accidents close to the camera on a busy road in and out of the region haven't fallen since its introduction. In fact, they've actually increased. Well, the camera monitors the southbound M11 between junctions 5 and 6 and results in over 9,000 tickets every year. Matthew Hudson has more. Thousands of cars use this stretch of the M11 in Essex every hour and thousands every year get snapped by this speed camera. It's one of the country's most prolific and lucrative cameras, earning around half a million pounds for the government every year. So the camera sits here all day, every day, merrily snapping speeding motorists. But is it simply a cash cow which has actually made accident rates here worse? Or is it a vital tool in the battle against people who simply drive too fast? As is so often the case, it really depends who you talk to. The camera is sighted where the speed limit drops from 70 miles an hour to 50. Local people we spoke to were well aware of its reputation. That road specifically has too far too many cameras. So a bit sneaky, I don't know. It is, yeah, I think so, yeah. I know sometimes I have helicopters watching the M11, but no different from any other road, is it really? The government get it all the time. This is it. They don't put it into the roads, do they? But campaigner Paul Pearson wanted to know more. 
He used the Freedom of Information Act to learn how many vehicles have been caught and how many accidents there have been since the camera's been there. Since it was installed in 2003, it snapped an amazing 44,688 motorists speeding. And that doesn't even include 2008, for which figures aren't available. Mr Pearson claims accidents have risen dramatically since the camera went online. Well, the idea, of course, is that they cut down on accidents and casualties, but this one isn't, so why they haven't removed it, I don't, I don't know. They're obviously making a lot of money from it, but that shouldn't be a reason for keeping a speed camera. It shouldn't be there. It's causing accidents and casualties. Um, they should have removed it shortly after it was put in. But Essex police categorically deny the camera is causing accidents. They say it's poor driving which causes crashes. Speed cameras have been about for a long time, but um, they are, as I say, they are just one of the tools that we use to reduce um, accidents. Um, it, it's um, quite, it is an important one, but um, we do use lots more um, methods now to look at driver behaviour. That's the most important thing that we're trying to um, adjust. Extra signs to warn motorists that the speed limit drops here have now been installed, and the police say there are no plans to remove the camera. Matthew Hudson, Anglian News, the M11 in Essex. One of our favourite subjects. Well, there's mm. still plenty more ahead on Monday's Anglia tonight. Well, more news now from your part of the region. And a hearing's begun today over the alleged misconduct of a paramedic following the death of an eight-year-old boy from Colchester. Harry Sherman, who suffered some cerebral palsy, died in April last year after an ambulance crew failed to treat him properly. Today, his parents attended the hearing in London. Alan McFarland, who was one of the two East of England ambulance service staff who was sent to Harry's home, did not turn up. The hearing continues. Next, the amazing science behind the production of one of the nation's favourite Christmas plants. Poinsettias have become a symbol of the festive season, but every year growers are troubled by a pest called whitefly. Now a nursery in Essex is shunning pesticide for a much more natural weapon, as Victoria Webb reports. With less than six weeks until Christmas, poinsettias will soon be in demand. At this nursery in Thorpe Socon, they're growing 60,000 of them and staff are keeping a close eye on their progress. Now the biggest threat to this plant is the white fly, but they don't use pesticides here to control that. Instead, they use what's known as beneficial insects. A few miles down the road in Little Clacton, Simon Foster and his colleagues at Syngenta Bioline send out around 4 billion bugs a week to nurseries across the world. One of their greenhouses is full of white fly, and it's in here where they can produce its predator. It may be nature, but the process is like something out of science fiction. This is the white fly, a pest that people growing poinsettias need to eliminate. And this is the Encarcia formosa wasp, the answer to their problems. The wasp tracks down the white fly's larvae and injects its own egg into it. Instead of that larvae continuing to develop into a white fly, it turns black and a new wasp hatches out. The wasp, which doesn't sting, is very effective, and you can see that by the sheer number of black dots on the back of this leaf. The wasps in their eggs are stuck onto these cards, and this is the product that we send out to growers across the world. The growers hang this product in their crop, the wasps hatch out of the eggs on the cards, and then go and hunt down whitefly in the crop, uh, where they parasitise the whitefly, thus protecting the crop. For grower Andrew Ramsbotham, it's a much easier option. Pesticides is never a, a friendly way to go. For the staff, we always have to be clear of all the staff when we spray. Perhaps not so good for me. I have to be qualified, put lots of equipment on. It takes time. So once the wasp has done its work, the next tricky task is for us to keep the plants alive when they reach our homes. The top tips from Andrew, never overwater them, make sure they stay warm and in plenty of light. That way, like the Encarcia formosa, you can help your poinsettia to thrive. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Thorpe Socon. Oh, beautiful colour.